one of the main <laughs> And one of the main reasons why I've raised this issue now is that uh, the majority of people find it very, very difficult to work through their emotions and still stay face to face to love. And also a lot of people on the divine love path seem to start thinking that they don't have to learn lessons in natural love. That they don't have to actually understand how love works on the divine love path. But remember how, remember what we've just said right from the beginning. Remember, what are these spheres things? What are they? Levels of life. They are, and these boundaries are boundaries in love. love. Okay, so everything's about love. Now remember the first six spheres. are the path to perfected natural love. Okay. And then above that, you're perfecting your areas of divine love. So, so if that's the case, and let's say the earth is in sphere number one, that means that as people on earth, we've got a lot to learn about love, doesn't it? And we don't want to differentiate between, oh, is this a natural love lesson or is this a divine love lesson so much? We just want to learn the lessons, don't we, of love. So a lot of the lessons of love are actually the first, if you can think about it this way, the first six levels of our development, a lot of the lessons of love are going to be about natural love and not divine love. All right. Now if that's the case, then we've got to learn about these lessons in natural love, what they actually are, what are some basic principles in love. Now there are literally hundreds of lessons in love that we can learn. But there are ten basic principles that if you learn them, a lot of these other lessons will all just make sense to you quite rapidly. And particularly if you learn them emotionally. Right. So you can see in the introduction that I've pointed out that you could choose to learn all of these lessons that I'm going to present to you over the coming day in a bit. You can choose to learn them all here. And you can choose to put them all into practice by actually thinking about it, working through the issue thought with thoughts, working out how you're going to do that better and then putting that into practice. You could choose to do it that way if you want. Now my suggestion is to not do that. My suggestion is to do it the divine love way. The divine love way is firstly pray to God about this emotion that causes you to not understand this particular principle. So let's say We've raised many times with you the issue of meat, eating meat, right? Now, remember, in every single time I've said, don't stop eating meat if that's not what you feel like doing. So if you still feel like eating meat, continue to eat meat. But you'll never be at one with God that way. I've also said that, haven't I? Right? And I'm speaking the truth, you won't. Now, the reason why is because you're breaking a law of natural love. So if I can go down the track then of saying, all right, if eating meat's breaking the law of natural love, what I'll do is I'll stop eating meat. So I'm not breaking the law anymore. Now, that is true. You can actually stop eating meat and not break that law anymore. But that doesn't change the emotion inside of you that wants meat in here. That wants meat in your tummy. Right? Well, eventually it might, after many, many years, but we want to cha make changes quite rapidly, don't we? We really want to make changes. If we're going to make a change, why not make it today and not take a year to do it? It'd be great to do it today. So with the change of eating meat, what we're suggesting is that you need to feel an emotion that's in you as to why you want meat in your body. There's an emotion in there. And there's also an opposing emotion, an emotion of error about you know, and there might be many hundreds, in fact, of beliefs that you may have now inside of yourself. Fears that you might have as to why you're eating it. For instance, uh, my mother has a very big fear about me not eating meat. Which is interesting, she's got a fear about me for a start. But, <laughs> so she's got a fear about me not eating meat. The reason why she feels that I will get, you know, my system will get all depleted, and I'm not getting enough protein, and my muscles will waste away, and you know, before you know it, I'm going to be bedridden and hospitalised in her mind, right? Now, her fear 
drives her to try to badger me to eat meat. Now, how many of you have had that? And some of you may even be feeling that yourself, right? Inside of yourself, that if I give away that, my health is just going to degrade. And some of you have even given away meat in the past, had your health degrade, and then said, oh, we must need meat. Some of you have even done that, right? And yet, the true issue is always the soul-based issue. And that's the thing we want to emphasize with all of these lessons. So you notice there's the natural love ways. There's two ways you can deal with this information. One way is to do it the natural love way. And the natural love way is dealing with it here, changing or transforming your beliefs or changing or translating your belief systems. And that may actually shift some emotions. It's very true that it often does. But that's not the way I'm suggesting. The way I'm suggesting is connect to your soul work out the sole reason why you do or don't do something that's harmonious with love and let yourself clear away the error so that you can easily do it without thinking. We want to stop this process of having to be loving here, thinking ourselves loving. We want to actually start the process of actually being love at every instance without thinking about it at all. Isn't that what you want? Yes to actually be loved without even having to think about it. That would make the most sense, wouldn't it? So that's what we want to focus on. So you notice under the divine love way, under ways to deal with this information, I've said how to deal with it on the divine love way. The, uh, so the divine love way is pray about it, look at the causal emotion within you that creates the desire to do something disharmonious with love. Feel and experience that emotion to release it and then allow or pray for the new truth to enter you from God. So God's truth to enter you about that issue. That's the process if you like. And when you follow that process, you will automatically be loved without having to try to be loved. That's what the process you want to do. You don't want to have to try. You know, that's what every religion on earth is doing, isn't it? No. You have a long list of words and you try. I was just going to comment that even though under the divine love way it looks like you've got more work to do because there's more points, <laughs> you've actually got God on your side, so it needs to be going. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's really important to understand that the natural love way, which is this intellectual way of changing, is actually the longest way. It actually takes the longest time. And we're often fooled into it being the shortest. But many of you have gone to different therapies and situations thinking, here's an easier way to deal with your emotions. And 10 years later, after you've tried that for 10 years, come away feeling, have I even dealt with the emotion? Right? But you were told at the start, this is an easier way. Now, I've seen many, many people do that in the last few years, where they've left the path of dealing, you know, God's way, which is the way you were taught, right? It was a way inbuilt in your soul and the way you used when you were one years old. That's God's way. That's God's way of dealing with your emotions. And many of us have gotten so far away from God's way of dealing with our emotions that we have fooled ourselves into believing we're dealing with emotions when the causal emotions remain. So we need to stop that from happening. And we need to get back into this state right, where we're childlike with this. But you don't have to do that in, this, in these lessons of love. These lessons of love, they'll apply. You can do it intellectually or you can do it emotionally. That is up to you. Right, so that's one thing I want to say to you first. You can do it how you wish. And question, maybe? Can we? Sorry, can you elaborate on how to pray to God about it? And the question was how, how to pray to God about it. And prayer, remember, what is prayer? What have I said prayer is every single time? It's a feeling or desire inside of you, directed towards God. So to pray to God about an issue, you must have a pure desire in your heart to deal with that issue. Now that's where we often run into trouble. So a lot of times we haven't got a pure desire in our heart to do with the issue. We think we have. But here in our feelings we haven't. So the feelings are the prayer. 
So um, if you have a very strong feeling to help a person, already you are praying for them. If you have a very strong feeling inside of you to deal with an emotion about something, you are already praying to God about that emotion. Now, you can add to that with your words, kind of, or you know, with your speech even, but in the end, if those words or speech do not come from an emotion, then it's not sincere and it can't be heard. Remember, God hears sincere prayers. So if I want to murder somebody, God's not going to help me with that prayer. Is it? Right? If I want to avoid my own emotions, God doesn't help me with that prayer. Right? Now, my law of attraction will be helped with that prayer. Like, I'll oh, get people to help me avoid my emotions all around me. <laughs> That's what will happen automatically. But God can't help me with that. Because God wants what with you? A soul to soul connection. That's what God wants with you. Not not a intellectual connection. Can I ask you a question? You know you're saying you have a feeling for something or someone. Um, do you need to have God in your mind in some way for it to become a prayer? Well obviously if we if it's a prayer, it's a feeling towards God about that issue. If it's a, if it's just a an idea or a concept or a feeling, it's just a feeling about that person. But even your feelings about other people, if they are harmonious with love, whether you are thinking you're praying to God or not, you are actually praying. This is how a lot of people receive divine love without knowing it. Because a lot of times they are actually feeling feelings about wanting this connection, this God connection, and they don't have any intellectual idea of what they're actually feeling. But God's love answers them. Does that make sense? So in the pageant messages, it's often said um, that there's a the, the distance between there and there is so often so great that we have no idea of the concept of the difference between there and there in our own heart or in our own mind. So a lot of times our soul longings are there that we just don't even know them in our mind. And oftentimes too, we think we have soul longings and we don't have any at all. I'll give you an example of that. If I if I have these, if I say to myself, I want to deal with this issue with men so that so that I can attract my soulmate into my life. And I'm a woman, let's say. I'm wanting to deal with this issue with men so that I can attract my soulmate in my life. But every time the law of attraction operates and with a man, I get angry with him. Am I wanting to deal with my issue with men? No. Anger itself is an indication I don't want to deal with it. So am I being truthful with myself? No. If I'm not being truthful with myself, am I going to ever be truthful with God? No. Now, God knows the truth, but that doesn't help me there because I'm not accepting that truth. You follow me? So, again, it gets back to soul design. Hey, Gloria, do you want to speak louder? Yeah. I found God to be an issue too. God to be an issue? I found I got angry at God um, quite a lot of times. Yeah. Um, because Things weren't being answered, and um, I felt there was just expectations not being met on my part. So, uh, one time... Can I, can I just stop you there for a moment, though? You know how you said you felt things weren't being answered? Actually, God is answering you all the time. Even when, he's, even when it sounds like silence. Right? Because what is He saying? Oh, no. <laughs> See, Often what we want is we want God to say yes all the time, right? But, but if we're going to learn God's truth, there's going to be times when we, and a lot of times obviously, when we are totally in disharmony with God's truth. And under those circumstances, He's going to be saying no. I found um, when I was truthful uh, and spoke up and said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, and God Like a real loving feeling, and I was yes. like amazed. It's like, holy, I spoke my truth, that angry at you, yeah. and, and he loved me. Exactly. Why is that? Because you were in that mode, you were in truth now, and what does God connect to? What, what is the connection between me and God? It's the spirit of truth. And so that's what, so if I'm really angry with God in my heart, and I'm saying to God, please love me, please, love, and I'm really what I should be saying to God, I'm totally, you know, peed off with you. And I'm, you know, and I can yell and scream at you. And it always reminds me of that, uh, 
the movie Forrest Gump, where, where Lieutenant Dean is on the top of the mast, screaming and yelling at God in the uh, hurricane, or whatever it was. And because at that moment, he's speaking the truth, and it's a transformational thing to do that, to speak the truth in those situations. Does that make sense? So God wants you to speak truth with God, but that means you're going to have to come to terms with that truth. So a lot of times we want to believe, in fact, that oh, I want things all loving lovely with God, but in reality, I really hate God's guts. Right? To put it bluntly, like we have all these terrible feelings about God in our heart, right? We need to acknowledge the truth of that, and ironically, when we acknowledge the truth of that, that's when God can make interaction with us. So that's something to bear in mind too. Jen, um, I have a profound difficulty with love and trust. And sometimes I feel like my prayers don't get home. And um, my question is, is it possible for spirits to masquerade and give you an answer? Oh, and certainly. A feeling and a substitute? Certainly. And then how do you know that your prayers are getting home? Well, if you have a feeling your prayer isn't getting home, then it probably isn't for a start. So as soon as you have that feeling that it's not getting home, all you need to do is go into that feeling. You need to feel that you're not being heard. What's the feeling? Nobody's listening to me. Even God won't listen to me. Go into that feeling. Process through that feeling. If you are addicted to the addiction, which we'll talk about addictions in this process, if you, if you have an addiction, which is, I want to be heard, you will then listen to any spirit who says, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you. Right? When the relationship with God is going to be just truthful. So there are times when God is not going to speak to you because you're out of harmony. God can't speak to you when you're out of harmony in that particular instance. And that's the thing to bear in mind. So what, one of the reasons for this Lessons in Natural Love is to help you become more in harmony with the way God feels. Because these Lessons in Natural Love are, are the way God feels about a lot of things. If you can't go through your connection with God if you don't feel you're connecting with God because because you're not feeling anything, and and perhaps you are really angry with Him, and you maybe you even feel like you're entitled to be angry with Him. Yes. But you don't feel angry with Him. Well, then how how does how do you get that feeling through? Well, um, in another session in about uh, I think it's April, late April, I'm going to talk about anger. Now, anger we we often in a state of suppression of anger. And that's probably a whole separate discussion in itself, which we'll talk about then. But just briefly, we suppress our anger so much that we go into states where we believe we're not angry with somebody. But our whole law of attraction is telling us constantly that we are. The truth is, if God is not, if it appears to me that God is not listening to me, then there can only be two things happening. One is that God isn't listening to me. The other thing is that God is listening to me and I'm not hearing the response. Now, most of the time, it's the second. God always listens, but doesn't respond, depending on what your demands are. And often we are demanding with God, rather than, rather than wanting to learn from God. So look at all of the emotions that you have surrounding abundance, surrounding men and women, surrounding all of those different emotions. Like, if you feel angry with men, then you're going to be angry with God as well. If you feel angry with women, you're going to be angry with God as well. So this, and if you feel like you're lacking abundance in your life, you're going to be angry with God <coughs> as well. So, so allow yourself to start looking. Am I angry? Start doing the personal work to dig deeper. If I'm detuning from everything, there will be law of attraction events happening in my life showing me that I'm detuning. And what, what would they be, for example? Well, it depends how I'm detuning. Uh, for instance, if, if my choice is to not feel my emotions, then there'll be a heap of law of attraction events going on in my life that prevent me from feeling my emotions. So that might be my life's really so busy that I can't feel an emotion. Now if that's happening to me, and I think that's happening to you, um, your life's so busy that you can't let yourself feel, but you can't feel an emotion, then you are choosing that. You are choosing a busy life to avoid your emotions. So start acknowledging the truth to God. <sighs> I must be avoiding the emotion. Because my life's getting so busy again, I must be wanting to avoid the emotion. I must be wanting to get away from myself because I feel like nobody can, I can't even do anything for myself.
myself anymore. So therefore, I must be wanting to get away from myself. Why is that? And ask yourself those kind of questions. Allow yourself to start seeing. And this is where your mind is very handy. It's a good tool to help you start observing yourself. But once you're observing yourself, you still need to get into the emotion. And there's a whole thing I've written on uh, the net, I think. Um, I called it re net, uh, Realizations, I think, or something like that. I can't remember what I called it. It was written quite a few years ago. Um, where I describe the process of intellectual realization, and then I describe the process of emotional realization, or soul realization. Um, I think it's under the headings of divine love path, divine love forgiveness and repentance, actually, on the net. And my suggestion is to have a read of that, because most of the time what we're doing is we're having intellectual realizations, but the soul isn't changing because the soul realizations are not occurring. And you can change that, but you have to really want to change that. 